going on? All right, what is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see in the thumbnail and title, we're gonna be doing a complete review of this boat. Also got some clips to show you of um, how it performed. Got a few fishing clips. First things first, we're gonna be talking about uh, some changes I did to the boat, which are minor. I haven't really started anything just yet, but there's one big change really big change okay as you previously saw in uh the video before this one i had the vanguard uh 6.5 horsepower motor uh, which is not a bad motor but it wasn't the motor for me uh, i still have it uh but it's going through some problems still don't really know what's wrong with it but it just wasn't giving me that power i wanted it kept cutting off on me i didn't look up everything on the internet uh what could be wrong with it but i still haven't really figured it out so what i end up doing we're just going to get another motor that is the good thing about these boats is they're cheap to replace this motor it only cost me a little bit over a hundred dollars and i ended up going with the harbor freight predator 212 which is also a 6.5 horsepower engine uh, and i have no problems with this one so far one big thing that uh should be mentioned especially if you're plan on doing something like this a design where you have the motor on uh, a kit that's going to be moving all around when you're in the boat you have a problem with the oil sensor okay so and that is a fairly common problem that when you're tilting that motor when you're in the water or whatever uh, that oil moves all around and that oil sensor picks it up and it will shut off the motor i had a problem with both of these motors uh, doing that so I cut off the oil sensor that kind of eliminated that problem so it, it can actually run for a long time so there's three key things I want to talk about with this boat performance of the motor stability of the boat and the overall handling of the boat as well okay so and these are three main factors of having a boat like this okay first off we're gonna start with the motor okay um, I'm roughly getting top speed with the motor as is and the kit propeller all that kind of stuff uh about 13 14 miles an hour it can go faster with a few modifications as far as pulling on the first try it's true but it's not true at the same time it just all depends as far as the fuel it runs pretty much forever you can fill that thing up and it'll run the whole day now there is a problem with the actual prop when i am in the water and the propeller goes into the water uh, you have to put it down pretty far i don't know if anybody has motors like this I need help this is my first time owning anything like this so not really sure what i'm doing i'm only going off of experience and how many times i put my boat in the water second thing we're going to talk about is stability okay i was very concerned about that this really was a really tough decision on getting this boat only because this was one of the only boats in the market that wasn't skyrocket high it was fairly cheap it's plastic which i don't know if that's a downfall or not i feel like the more weight you put in this boat the more stable it is so with two people it is perfectly stable all right you just gotta communicate with other person and everything could be all right and the biggest biggest factor of all in this boat is the portability maneuvering this boat getting it from one place to another okay i do not have a trailer for this boat don't know if i want to get one for this boat and the only reason why is because if you've seen my recent videos you know that i combat launch anywhere if my small kayak can get in there and, and get in that spot and i can launch from right there i'm gonna go ahead and do it you know it's a little different with this boat okay process of me picking up this motor which it is not heavy but carrying it for long periods of times it's going to get heavy sticking it on the transom which that was the whole purpose of me getting a motor like that because uh i'm going to just put this in the back of my truck and go i mean i want to put the motor in the boat and then when it's time to launch pick the motor up put it on the transom get out in the water the boat itself is about a little bit over 100 pounds uh dragging it is easy picking it up not so easy so other than that it all depends on what you bring with you if you're gonna bring four or five anchors uh a whole bunch of gear it's gonna get tough especially if you're combat launching now if you're at an actual launch you can just drag everything to the actual boat launch and do what you gotta do. And this Predator 212 is fairly easy to run. It has the fuel switch to turn it on and off. It has the on and off power switch on the side, uh, just in case you wanna just cut it off right away immediately. You also have the choke, which is the carb door to uh, open it and close it. And once you work all those three, all you gotta do is just give it a pull and it starts right up. Now, feature-wise, all right, this is probably my favorite thing about this boat. This boat has a lot 
well, I wouldn't say a lot, but it has some pretty cool features, okay? You have the cup holders. Those are really good for replacing small baits. You know, it's almost like you have shelves, okay? Or like small tables. You can just put stuff that where you wanna put it at. But the features is really good on this boat, okay? Yeah, it's plastic, kind of fragile. It's got some spots where it can bend. The hull of this boat, the bottom of it, uh, sliding on the concrete and stuff. Anybody owns a kayak, they know how that is. It's gonna get pretty scratched up. I know some of this stuff was mentioned in the previous video, but I wanted to give you more of an update on how it performed in the water. Actually taking it out and seeing how it was, and I do not regret anything about this boat. Very good investment for me um, for fishing the waters that I do. I think this was a very good investment. It's the perfect fishing machine, duck hunting machine, whatever you want to do in Louisiana, bayous, Louisiana marsh, this boat can get it done. Without further ado, we're gonna get into the fishing clips and I'm gonna show you guys how that went. about maybe 70 yards but we're at our first stop all right so today we're going to be using the sackle minnow it was kind of beat up but it's, oh my god that's a spider how the hell did it get on my hand anyway we're using the black and gold sackle minnow let's see if there's anything in the area still a nice little hole over here still oh, here it is here it is that's a good fish too what is this it was like a catfish i don't know it's Oh, it's a goo. I haven't caught one of y'all in forever. Look at this, you guys. That is a pretty, pretty fish. I don't eat them, but it's a pretty fish. Real glossy looking freshwater drum known as a Gasper goo. Put up a good fight. Man, look at that. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Not the first bass in the boat, but the first freshwater bass. That's what I'm talking about. Small one, but we'll keep that. Well, we're not gonna actually keep it, but we'll take it. We'll go ahead and release you, buddy. And ran straight into the boat. What happened? Oh, I see it. There it is. Finally. Oh my God, get in the boat, get in the boat. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know why it took me three hours to catch you. Even though you're a small one, finally got a sack laid in the boat. Should have been a three pounder, but it's okay. There it is. Good fish. There it is. Fast. It's a good one, too. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all didn't want to start biting until it's time to go home. Still not a keeper fish, but uh, and actually, I'm just going to keep sack laid today, but still a good fish. All right, you guys, tide is still extremely high, higher than normal. I would say it's about a foot higher than normal, which is still good. That means plenty of salinity to go around in here. And as you can see, this John boat is uh, fairly stable. I'm on the very top platform where you would sit at in the front. 
and I have no trouble balancing. Oh my God, there's fish right there. Look at it, look at it. Oh my God, and there's so much shrimp in here. Nothing so far, but I'm, I'm seeing a fish. Oh, there mine, there's one. Here's the first fish of the day. Not <laughs> entirely what I want, but it is a start. The only rat red I catch today. So we're gonna go ahead and throw him back. I swore he would've been right here. Golly, look at that. Here it is. Here it is. That is a freaking trout, is it? Oh no, it's a bass. Well, you're a green trout. <laughs> oh man. I want a swimming mullet goat. Too small for me, but you are a good start. So it's the first bass in the boat. I'm gonna go ahead and throw you back, buddy. There it is. There's one. Oh man, that was a good bass. There it is. That's a good fish. And, oh, catfish. Never mind. Never mind. I thought it was a good fish. Felt like a heavy fish, but it's just a catfish. Well, on the bright side, you guys, that's three species in the boat. There we go. Nice little catfish. Channel catfish. Please stay back. That's one of the reasons why I don't want to get shrimp is because of those guys. Oh, there's another one. This is like another catfish. I don't know. Whatever it is. It's Oh, it's heavy. Hold on. Might be what I was looking for. Okay, it looked like a red. Might be a keeper. Oh, yes, that's a keeper red. The first keeper red of the day. Where's my freaking net? Probably barely hooked because I didn't set the hook at all. There we go. <laughs> yes, come on, put the slime in the boat. All right, here we go. We got the slime in the boat, you guys. I'm going to last too much long anyway. Look at his tail, you guys. Tail is horrible. 